Baek Hina is a multi-award winning Korean picture book artist, born in Seoul in 1971. The majority of her 13 picture books are illustrated with intricately crafted miniature figures and environments. Beck has a background in animated film and studied at the IEVA Women's University in Seoul and at the California Institute of the Arts. After working in advertising and multimedia for children, she turned to creating her own picture books when her daughter was born. What happens when you eat bread baked of clouds? In her first book, Cloud Bread, Beck demonstrates innovation and a desire to find new modes of visual expression. The story takes place on a rainy Monday, when two kittens find a little cloud and take it home. Their mother uses the cloud to bake bread, which they eat for breakfast. Not only is the bread delicious, it also makes everyone who eats it turn light as a cloud and gives them the ability to fly. The book's characters and their surroundings are all fabricated of paper and cardboard, lit and photographed by Huang Su Kim. The contrast between the flat paper figures and the three-dimensional spaces creates a dynamic, magic world that draws viewers irresistibly into the story. Since her debut, Beck has continued to evolve a singular and highly original picture book world. Within that world, she constructs stories very much like theatre pieces, building environments like stage sets and using lighting to great effect. Her techniques connect to a long tradition of toy books, a genre to which she has brought development and renewal within her highly original technical and artistic solutions. Beck's early picture books show a fascination with dollhouse-like environments populated with dolls or flat figures cut from paper. Moonshir Bay is set in an apartment building on a sweltering summer's night, so hot that the heat wakes up the residents. When the moon itself begins to melt and the overstrained air conditioning causes a power outage, the residents can enjoy Moon Bay that grants them relief from the heat and cool, peaceful dreams. Bekina often draws attention to the book as a special and material form. Her technique recalls the peep box or the diorama, where objects arranged within a box or a glass case create a miniature scene in perspective. Beck herself has mentioned Hitchcock's rear window as an inspiration for cloud bread, and the concept reappears in Monsher Bay. Last night, similarly set in an apartment building, takes the form of a fold-out book, reinforcing the linkages between the characters in the story. Each panel takes the reader into a new home and shows a snapshot of everyday routines, problems and relationships. As the book shows, all of them, despite individual differences, belong together and have more in common than they might imagine. Beck's handcraft truly comes to the fore in this book, whose characters seem proud to be identifiable as handmade dolls. Mr. Zebra's body is soon of striped cotton, his neighbors Mr. and Mrs. Dog boast button eyes and visible stitching. They are shabby, lopsided and misshapen, but it is these imperfections that give them much of their charm. In later books, such as Bath Fairy, Magic Candies and I Am a Dog, Beck's characters become even more expressive. They have firm bodies, sculpted from clay, accentuating their anatomy and facial features. The setting, too, evolved toward a more animated and cinematic style, using visual depth and spatiality in a highly innovative way for the picture book as a medium. The process of creating each book is long and laborious. To achieve a range of gestures and physical appearances, the artist crafts multiple small clay figures in different poses. Becca said that she finds inspiration in the craft process itself and a creative challenge in the picture book format and the constraints of two-dimensional image making. Her dedication to the artistic process, the sculpting and the lighting, and her attention to the tiniest detail are not only impressive but also crucial to the finished result. 
This might mean making scores of copies of a single character with small variations, manufacturing tiny articles of clothing, or hand printing wallpapers that we will never more than glimpse in the background. For all the care that she lavishes on her characters, Beck devotes equal attention to the environments they inhabit. She opens and extends space in a way reminiscent of animated film. At the same time, she uses lighting to define spaces and create an atmosphere that is distinctive, inviting and intimate. Alternating between close-ups and long shots, her visuals are typically designed around the experience of the child character. In Bath Fairy, a little girl goes to the baths, where she meets a mysterious old lady who turns out to be a bath fairy. The book does full justice both to Beck's sense of the slapstick and the capacity of children's wholehearted experience. The sheer physical pressure of sliding into cool water or lounging in a hot bath is captured to perfection. Naked bodies, young and old, are pictured matter-of-factly and with nuance. Although the majority of her books focus on children and convey the child perspective, she also portrays adults and the elderly with refinement and humor. Bath Fairy is one example. Another is Red Bean, Grady and the Tiger with author Young Q Park. For this story, based on a Korean folktale, she crafted her expressive figures from Hanji, the traditional Korean paper made from Mulberry Park. In Moonshire Bay, the main character is an old lady wolf. She is the one who takes the lead and catches the drops of the melting moon in a bowl to make magical sherbet for everyone. And it is she who makes the moon return so that the homeless moon rabbits, familiar figures in Asian folktale and myth, can return home again. There is, in other words, a strong connection between the generations in her books as well as a living interest in exploring and incorporating the ingredients of literary tradition. Beck's picture book, Worlds, opened the door to magic and wonder. Nowhere is this more true than in Little Chick Piaki's mom, drawn in charcoal and ink. This quirky tale paints a portrait of parenthood that is both candid and comedic. A cat named Yao loves to hunt down and torment small animals. One day, however, the cat swallows a chicken egg and is amazed to give birth to a baby chick. This unlikely event leads to an equally unlikely transformation in Miao, who finds a new role in life. An elevated, enchanted everyday is often a core element in Beck's stories. She crafts stories that draw readers into the emotional lives of her characters. This is particularly the case in Magic Candies, about a young boy named Dong Dong, whose life takes a decisive turn when he stumbles upon some magical sweets that give him the power to hear and speak to animals, inanimate objects, and his dead grandmother. The story takes the form of an interior monologue by the boy, underlining the connections between the magical events of the story and his emotional process. In a subtle and open-ended manner, Beck shows how he gradually achieves a better understanding of himself and others. This entails coming closer to his father and finding a pathway out of his solitary existence. Another distinctive feature of Magic Candice is the way Beck integrates the book's text with its Korean characters into the visual images and indeed the plot. This technique also appears in her earlier books, but it truly comes into its own here, especially when conveying Dong Dong's complicated relationship to his father, a man worn down by the everyday grind. The father's endless harping fills a page with suffocating block of text, while his unspoken affection for his son appears in light, twining worlds that float through the air. On a later page, Beck gives a similar voice to the falling autumn leaves. Lightly, floatingly, they bid a final farewell. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. There is a poetic grandeur to this technique, with its suggestion that the world is a place both alive and ensouled. Interior monologue is also used in her most recent book, I am a dog, 
which forms the prequel to Magic Candies and is narrated by Dong Dong's dog. It is a finely tuned portrayal of a dog and his human family, where readers learn about how the dog sees the world, about his longing for his mother, and about his friendship with the boy in the family. The story shows a respect for the needs and feelings of animals, as expressed in the unusually nuanced depiction of the dog, who goes through a variety of facial expressions, looks and body postures, and the acknowledgement of his capacity for longing, sorrow and joy. Bekina is an artist who is renewing the picture book medium through bold and uncompromising development of new techniques and artistic solutions. Her feeling for materials, speciality and gesture is impressive and innovative. Her picture books invite multiple readings and close contemplation of their minutely constructed visual worlds. Yet their skillful execution never stands in the way of the story. Beck's enchanting picture book worlds engage, amuse, amaze and move us. The child's perspective runs through them all, as does an unshakable belief in the power of play and imagination in our lives. From the pages of her picture books, a chorus of voices invites us to step into their world and find new ways to see, think and feel.